Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the sermon video for September 6th, the 14th Sunday after Pentecost, here at Zion Lutheran Church in Deer Park. The sermon is drawn from the second reading, Romans 13, 8 to 14. The sermon title is Labor of Love. The sermon theme is Jesus Frees Us to live lives of loving neighbor. So a reading from Romans, the 13th chapter, Paul writes, Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is. How it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let, let us live honorably in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from, his, from God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Talk about getting the last laugh. An 83-year-old Connecticut woman who died in January 2015 wrote her own obituary in which she claimed she had died hiking Mount Kilimanjaro. Norma Brewer wrote this obituary 11 years before she died. It reads in part, Norma Ray Flicker Brewer passed away while climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. She never realized her life goal of reaching the summit, but made it to the base camp. Her daughter, Donna, her dog, Mia, and her cats came along at the last minute. There is suspicion that Mrs. Brewer died from hyperthermia after Mia ate Mrs. Brewer's warm boots and socks. While this obituary likely did not fool anyone, it reminded Brewer's loved ones of her fondness for pranks and her sense of humor. Apparently, something similar is behind a recent obituary from Haley, Montana. The obit begins, Holly Blair exploded into glitter and bats on August 17, 2020. The notice also listed her future plans as flying across the moon on her broomstick on Halloween. Well, while these obituaries are purposefully not true, there is something revealing in actual true obituaries. Ariana Huffington, the founder of the Huffington Post, asks, Have you ever noticed that when people die, their eulogies celebrate life very differently from the way we define success in our everyday existence. She goes on to say, no matter how much a person spends his or her life burning the candle at both ends, chasing a toxic definition of success, and generally missing out on life, the eulogy is always about the other stuff, what they gave, how much they connected, how much they meant to the lives 
of real people around them. Small kindnesses, lifelong passions, and what made them laugh. laugh. Huffington concludes, so the question is, why do we spend so much time on what our eulogy is not going to be? Well, in a sense, the Apostle Paul calls you to live your life as if your obituary will be in tomorrow's morning's newspaper. In today's second reading from Romans 13, Paul declares that the day of the world's darkness is ending and the day of Jesus is near. Therefore, Paul calls you to live like today is the last day you have to ensure what that you will have an inspirational obituary in the morning newspaper. Further, Paul is clear that the values of the world are not what you should have in your obituary. Back in Romans 12, Paul puts it this way, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Yes, living out the will of God is what leads to inspirational obituaries. And in Romans 13, Paul is clear what is central to living out the will of God. The center of living out the will of God is to love your neighbor as yourself. For Paul, love does no wrong to neighbor. The word Paul uses for wrong also has the implication of being bad in a way that is harmful or damaging to another person. So loving your neighbor is not harming your neighbor in any of the ways listed in the Ten Commandments. Paul asserts that love is the fulfilling of the law. Well, a call to love as never harming your neighbor on its own sounds very daunting and then some. Unless one has some self-delusion, you know that on your own you're not capable of living a life in which you never harm your neighbor. The good news is that Paul does not have in mind you or me or any of us fulfilling the law of love. For earlier in Romans, Paul already made clear who the one to fulfill the law is. In Romans 8, the first four verses read, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by flesh could never do by sending God's own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin. God condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. These words of Paul can be summed up in this way. In pure love, Jesus died for your sin so that Jesus fulfilled the law of love for you. Back to today's readings from Romans 13, Paul speaks to this truth. Paul calls you to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, by faith you can put on Jesus Christ. And then Jesus inside you gives you the fulfillment of the love commandment. Now, Paul is clear that in your life on earth, you'll be pulled one way by the nighttime of the world and pulled another way by the new day of Jesus Christ. Yet Paul is also clear that with each new day of salvation, Jesus will be nearer and nearer to you. By the love of Jesus, 
you can live a life that will make an inspirational obituary. By the love of Jesus, we can have obituaries that speak of what we did for others, how we help people, the seemingly small things we did that meant so much to others. Now, as we noted at the beginning, obituaries tend to not mention the material success we accomplish from our jobs. Well then, does that mean our jobs do not matter? Are we wrong to observe Labor Day? Well, the answer must be no. That our daily work is important is pointed to by how the New Testament lifts up and affirms people's daily work. Jesus was a carpenter. He labored. He worked with his hands. The disciples included fishermen and a tax collector. Peter's mother-in-law worked to serve her guest. Paul was a tent maker. Lydia was a dealer in purple cloth. So God's word affirms our daily work. Our daily work is meaningful. Yet, what is meaningful in our work is not what the world finds meaningful. What is meaningful is not our paychecks or status. Instead, what is meaningful in our work is what the love of Jesus finds meaningful. I read through a few days of obituaries in the Spokesman Review. There were plenty of inspirational qualities listed throughout. A giver, a lover of family and friends, a compassionate person, a generous person, a moral guide, a person devoted to their church, a person committed to civic service, and so on. Still, jobs were listed in some of the obits. Yet what was said about jobs did not include money earned or things of worldly status. Instead, I read of a school cook who cherished seeing the children and serving them lunch each day, a hospital nurse who was a compassionate advocate for his patients, a woman who served her nation in the Air Force, a music teacher who lifted up his students, a small business owner who tremendously enjoyed people, so he formed personal relationships with his customers, and a farmer who took pride in hard work and providing food for others. So, the daily work that is most valued is work that helps and loves others. Well, despite um, all the hardship of these COVID-19 time, one good thing that has emerged is people recognizing that people's work is essential. Elizabeth Eaton, the presiding bishop of our Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, speaks to this in a message for this coming Labor Day. Bishop Eaton writes, This year's impact of the COVID-19 pandemic has revealed the heroics and faithfulness of the many we now know to be essential workers. She goes on to state, while all workers are essential, especially during this pandemic, we give special thanks on this Labor Day for those who, despite challenges and dangers to their health, plant and harvest and deliver our food, keep store shelves stocked with essentials, nurture and teach our children, and care for the sick. She continues, in honor of their contributions to our country's well-being, they deserve our support and accompaniment so that they can do their jobs safely with dignity and respect. She then turns to God's love, writing, God's sustaining love for all of us is even more abundant than our imaginations and is providing us with the creativity 
and grit to try, try again so that Christ is proclaimed and our communities are served. Yes, indeed. God's love blesses all our work so we can love our neighbors. Whether you work in home, school, field, road, office, military base, or factory, Jesus blesses you with the labor of love. Amen.